My clicker works. Can you, can you all hear me on this mic? I can also project more so that the folks in the back can hear me. Um, good morning. I'm Marika Crumhansel. I am so happy to be here at DevOps Days Columbus, and I want to extend a really heartfelt thank you to all the organizers. It's been a real pleasure um, to come to Columbus for the first time and be so warmly received, so thank you. Um, I'd like to share some of the things that I've learned from um, managing DevOps engineers and also trying to uh, implement a DevOps culture transformation. So uh, for those that uh, didn't see my uh, technical talk yesterday, just a quick introduction. I'm currently the DevOps manager at Powell's Books in Portland, Oregon. Powell's is the, thank you. Powell's is the largest independent bookstore in the United States. Uh, outside of work, I also volunteer with the PDX Women in Tech organization where I volunteer as a speaker with them. Outside of work, I am an avid uh, earthquake emergency preparedness fanatic. Uh, some of you may be aware that Portland is in the Cascadia subduction zone. Um, and so I volunteer with the Portland Bureau of Emergency Management to prepare my neighborhood and neighborhoods across Portland for that. I also um, dance in an Estonian folk dancing troupe. Thank you! And, uh, and I love to read, so working at Powell's Books is basically a dream come true. Um, okay, so I have a confession. My own job title makes me really uncomfortable, right? DevOps manager. It's like, so I'm responsible for DevOps? Is no one else responsible for DevOps? I mean, that's like hiring a QA manager and expecting them to inject quality into your product at some point during the process, right? Am I just supposed to sprinkle some DevOps on it and everything will be great? Yeah, sounds great. Uh, so although it makes me uncomfortable, my title makes me uncomfortable, I do absolutely love what I do. And I think that the role that I play is really important for, for all companies. Uh, so I know that there has been um, discussion on social media and honestly for the entire like history of the DevOps movement, like is DevOps a job title or is it a philosophy, right? I know that there are some folks who have really strong opinions about that one way or the other. Uh, if you think about the acronym CALMS, uh, which stands for Culture, Automation, Lean, Metrics, and Sharing, so these are the pillars of a successful DevOps mindset at a company, right? And culture comes in at the top, uh, and I don't think that's an accident, right? In order for a DevOps mindset to really be successful at an organization, the whole organization needs to make it part of the culture. And so it can't just be one person's job or a group of people's job. DevOps is definitely a philosophy, right? All right. So I worked at a company that like, very much embraced this perspective. And um, we didn't have anyone in the engineering org that had the title of DevOps engineer or like uh, operations engineer or anything like that. Everyone was just software engineer, right? And what that meant was that when our CI pipeline like had an issue, like there was a build outage, or um, like the disk on our binary repo uh, filled up, you know, like people from various teams ended up running to the fire and uh, helping to resolve the issue in the moment and then kind of going back to their teams, right? Um, we had essentially communal ownership of our, of our internal tools. And so what we ended up with was this. We had Howell's Moving Castle, and what that meant was that, uh, you know, it was brittle, it was not scalable, um, our delivery pipeline was very leaky, and, uh, and so, you know, in order, these are business critical tools, right? And they deserve better. And so, you know, you definitely need to hire folks who focus on that stuff, who ha um, have a vision for it. And, that the tools then are owned by folks that make, can make sure that those tools can support where the company is going. So you gotta hire, you know, whatever you call them, call them automation engineers, 
call them delivery engineers. Like, but I'm gonna put these in air quotes. Like, you gotta hire the engineers that are gonna focus on the automation that makes the DevOps go, right? And so here is uh, a bit of a, a conundrum for someone like me who has the role of DevOps manager, is that the skills that make you a good manager of DevOps engineers is a absolutely completely different set of skills that make you good at organizational like transformation, at the cultural side of DevOps uh, transformation. And so um, you can choose to be either good at one or the other. Uh, I have attempted to try like to do both. And so what I'd like to do for the remainder of my talk is just share some of the things that I've learned about um, managing DevOps engineers, what is unique about that, managing DevOps culture in an organization, and then just being real about what it, what it is to be a DevOps manager. Okay, so to start out with, to be a good manager of DevOps engineers, you just gotta be a good manager, right? Which means you need to have really good um, communication with your direct reports. So regular one-on-ones are a really core and important part of being a good manager to DevOps engineers. Side note, so on certain slides, you'll see this Powell's logo in the bottom corner. Uh, this indicates that there's a book on this slide that I find uh, helpful or have found really relevant and helpful for me um, on this topic. Okay, so the reason that for DevOps uh, managers, it's especially important to have close uh, professional communication with your direct reports is because DevOps engineers tend to um, experience a lot of thrash in the work that they're doing and uh, like do a lot of toil. And so um, when, I, when I say thrash, an example of that is that I, as a DevOps manager, was leading a team at a company and we were working on the highest priority thing and ran into a major blocker because we had a dependency on like another team, right? And this is really common when you're working on a DevOps team because the tools that you're building um, like are really relied upon and rely on a lot of what the other teams are doing. And so the other team was unable to um, like unblock us for another couple sprints, so we switched gears and started working on the next highest priority thing and then suddenly there was a major build outage and we like shifted focus to that. And unfortunately this is kind of a fact of life for, for folks working in this type of space. And so as a manager you just need to make sure that you're setting appropriate expectations for yourself and that your folks are setting appropriate expectations for themselves. Um, and that really happens best by uh, having frequent one-on-ones. Toil, on the other hand, is a, the manual repetitive work and a lot of folks that respond to production outages do a lot of toil, unfortunately. Like, oh yeah, it's this error, that means we need to go like restart this server over here again, right? Um, and these are, these are things that could be automated but the folks have not been given the chance to automate that toil away. And um, unfortunately, both of these things, thrash and toil, can contribute to a, uh, a kind of feeling of burnout among DevOps engineers. And uh, burnout is a, is a state in which the worker or the, the person is feeling completely disengaged from their work, uh, dread coming to work in the morning. Um, it is actually kind of really um, a mental health is issue. And so uh, here are a couple of talks that I recommend on burnout if you, if you would like to learn more about that. But as a DevOps manager, it is absolutely your responsibility to make sure that your folks are being taken care of and that they're not suffering from burnout. Okay, so unique thing about being a DevOps manager is that not only are you the engineering manager, but you have to know all of the other agile roles and responsibilities too. You won the jackpot. Um, so not only am I the engineering manager, but I'm also the product owner, the scrum master, the individual contributor at times because um, you know, DevOps teams are small and everyone needs to pitch in. Uh, and then at times I have been the most like, experienced person and therefore kind of fill in the role of the tech leader architect. And so I'm going to talk about these two for a second. Um, so as the product owner, uh, actually can I see a show of hands? How many of you here work at a company where the 
team that does the internal tools, so like the DevOps team, actually has a product owner um, dedicated to them. Wow, you were so lucky. There was just a handful of hands. Um, I have never been so lucky as to work at a company that dedicated a product owner to the internal tools team. And so I have had to play that role um, a, a few times. And, uh, and what that means is that I've had to translate the company level strategy into a prioritized backlog for the team. I have to understand the users of the tools, of the products that I'm building, essentially. And so um, like user personas are a thing, right? Like the tool that I build for the QA folks is going to look different than the tool that I build um, that like the customer support team needs to use, right? And you need to understand the key workflows because if you forget one of the key workflows for one of your user personas, you're definitely going to hear about it. Um, so, so that's important to understand your users. You also need to be able to describe the value of the work that you're delivering. And so I've gotten really good at thinking about how to translate um, you know, increases in efficiency into like, things that the business cares about, right? Um, because that's really hard. And, and as a product owner for DevOps tools, you need, to, you need to know how to do that for your business leaders. And so we've got to do all the product owner stuff. Like, I'm creating epics, I'm leading backlog grooming meetings, I'm prioritizing the backlog. Um, and that takes a lot of time, uh, but I would rather do that for my team than ask someone else on my team to do that for me. Okay, so as a tech lead and architect, um, what, uh, what a DevOps manager often needs to do is design, also design the technical tools and the technical solutions um, that meet the business needs, and doing this in a way that keeps the overall company vision and strategy in mind. And this actually means that you need to take your own ego out of the equation because although I would love to learn how to use Kubernetes, like I can't just do Kubernetes if it doesn't make sense for the business, right? So, um, so this is about choosing the right tools for the problem. And being able to describe the technical pathway that's gonna get you from where you are today to where you need to be. Um, if at all possible, like I would recommend that you hire someone smarter than yourself to play this role, because if you're doing all of those uh, agile roles, right, engineering manager and product owner and scrum master and individual contributor and tech lead, at some point there is going to be a serious conflict of interest, and you owe it to your team um, to to remove as much conflict of interest as possible. Okay, um, I'm going to get real for a second. Um, can you please raise your hand if the company that you work for has said, at least internally, that diversity is important to your company? Okay, so I see most people's hands raised. Can you please now like, keep your hands raised or raise your hands if your uh, company's diversity efforts have actually worked? That is incredible. That's awesome. So. Um, Unfortunately, this is not the case for many companies, right? Across the, comp across the country, uh, diversity and inclusion efforts are failing pretty badly in a lot of companies because um, those efforts are being led by white folks. And so just due to unconscious bias on our part, um, tend to focus on white folks' issues, uh, which means that, like, oddly enough, Diversity efforts tend to benefit white folks more than the folks that they are intending to benefit. Um, you know, so I am a white cis woman, and there's nothing wrong with being white, but as, even as a woman, right? Like, we talk a lot about um, women in tech and, like, getting positions for women in technical positions. Um, as a white woman in, in tech, it's, it's easier for me, often, to get hired into, into positions than it is for my colleagues who are black or my colleagues who are indigenous, uh, for people of color or for folks who are transgender or gender nonconforming. And um, diversity is important. And I could go over so many different studies that describe how diverse teams are more creative, they are better problem solvers, that companies with diverse leadership are better performing in the market. But really, the reason that we should care about diversity is because we're compassionate human beings. And, um, and it is much more difficult for, uh, for folks in underrepresented communities to be hired. And so 
as a DevOps manager, I have a obligation um, to use my, my power for good. And I hope that you will as well. And so what this means is that I recommend that you as a DevOps manager, a hiring manager, provide entry level positions on your team. Um, bear in mind, I'm not saying that every position on your team needs to be an entry level position. Um, obviously, you need to get work done. So you need at least a mid and, or you know, maybe a senior. But even if you have just a team of two, right? one of those can be a mid or senior, and the other one can be an entry level position. And then prioritize hiring folks from underrepresented communities into those entry level positions. And when you do that, you do a few things. You have several benefits. Um, you provide a pathway for underrepresented folks into tech. Um, and this can be a truly life changing opportunity for these folks. You also provide really valuable mentorship opportunities for your mid to senior folks, right? You pair the entry level folks together with your mid to senior. Um, and this is a great career development opportunity for those more senior folks. And then finally, by pairing on work together, you just raise the quality of, of work that is delivered. Um, and so everyone benefits. All right, so now I'm gonna switch gears and talk a little bit about managing DevOps culture. Um, so here's the thing, DevOps transformations are huge organizational changes, right? And the thing is that in addition to DevOps being a big organizational change, it kind of goes hand in hand with an agile transformation, right? You, ca you can't really do one successfully without doing the other. Um, if you try and just do an agile transformation without also doing a DevOps transformation, you're going to have very limited success, right? Um, and this is a big cultural change for a company. And so what I would recommend is that if you're, even if you're not a DevOps manager, but you're, you're wanting to um, make some changes at your company on this front, um, that you become familiar with organizational change management framework. So just a step back for a second. When I say change management, um, I'm not talking about old school like ITIL change management practices where you're um, worried about changes to production environments and you've got change request tickets and whatnot, right? Um, when I talk about change management, I'm talking about changing the uh, complex, nonlinear, adaptive uh, systems of behavior of people that kind of makes up a culture at a company, right? And a DevOps transformation is organizational change. So there's actually a whole um, uh, field of study on uh, organizational change management. And John Cotter has a framework for it that, I, that really resonated with me. And there are these eight steps or eight phases that he calls out. Um, and all of them are important. And if you miss any of them, your change effort could fail. But I'm going to talk about these four because, um, because I just chose to talk about these four. So in order for your DevOps transformation or really any organizational change to be successful, the most important and most difficult thing to do is to generate a sufficiently strong sense of urgency around the change. Um, and essentially what, what the company needs to come to an agreement on is that the status quo is not seen as a viable option, right? So as a DevOps manager, your job is to scare people, but carefully, right? So um, what I mean by this is that you can't go around lying, right? You can't say things like, well, if we don't do DevOps, our company is going to go out of business, right? Because that's probably not true. I mean, in reality, what's probably going to happen is your company is just not going to be as successful as it could be, right? And you can't go around scaring people to such an extent that they are, like, panicked, right? You can't say things like, well, if we don't start delivering more and faster, we're going to lay off the entire like onshore engineering team and just outsource everything, right? Because then people are just going to run around like they've got their chickens with their heads cut off and not make any like valuable contributions. They're just wanting to look busy, right? So um, you can say things that are true and that speak to people's emotions and that make it um, you know, the, the status quo seen as not being the acceptable viable solution. So you can say things like, our company is too slow to compete with competitor X, or our quality is too low and our customers are losing faith, right? And DevOps can help with that. You also need to create a sufficiently strong guiding coalition. And what this means, unfortunately, is that you do need at least 
one champion who is at the top of the organization. You also need at least one very strong technical individual contributor, right? And so the reason you need this high level uh, champion is because that is the person that is gonna be able to redirect budget or allow you to reorganize your engineering organization um, so that you can break down those barriers and create that type of DevOps culture, right? Um, the harsh reality is that grassroots efforts at DevOps transformation have really limited success. You might be able to um, make some changes within your own team or like locally, but if you want that sweeping organization-wide change, like you need to have someone at the top that can, that can cut through that red tape. The harsh reality for a DevOps manager is that I'm middle management. So I am neither the C-level exec, nor you know, often the very strong technical individual contributor. And so my job is to relentlessly lobby a C-level exec and to get a, a tech lead or someone on board with this change effort. You also need a clear vision and strategy. So these are two different things, right? Vision is your North Star. It should be succinct. It should be something that really speaks to people's emotions and very easily understandable. It's something like the vision is that we will ship measurable value to customers every day, right? And then your strategy is essentially how you're going to get there from where you are today. And often this is written in terms of uh, objectives and key results. If your, team, if your company uses OKRs, um, like often strategy is um, described in terms of those goals, right? Unfortunately, companies are really bad at this very often, right? I, I unfortunately have had a lot of trouble at many, some of the companies that I've worked at with setting goals and having really clear goals. And so um, as a DevOps manager, I have had to manage up a lot, which means that um, my, I've been having to keep my own boss accountable to setting really um, specific, measurable, uh, uh, actionable, uh, relevant and timely goals, smart goals, right? Um, and, and that my peers also do that for their teams. And at the very least, like I've been adamant about making sure that anyone underneath me or who reports to me um, has really clear goals. And then finally, you, you need to create short-term wins because these short-term wins create and sustain the momentum around your change effort. And often these, uh, these wins will convert the um, undecided folks into true believers. And so as a DevOps manager, like, you need to show irrefutable proof that you're on the right track with this DevOps transformation stuff. And often this comes in the form of a pilot. So a pilot should be doable in a year or less with the team that you have. It should have demonstrable business value and it should be measurable progress along the way. Um, and this will, this will show the rest of the company that we should continue to invest in this DevOps transformation stuff. Okay, so I have, a, I have a third confession for this talk, and that is that I have struggled leading DevOps teams and also leading a DevOps transformation. It's hard. And so here are the realities of managing DevOps engineers and managing DevOps culture, right? Like I know, I have heard from, uh, from engineers and from folks who are individual contributors that um, you know, man, if only management buy-in, if we had management buy-in, we could do this DevOps thing, right? Um, I'm here to tell you that I'm in management, I buy into it, and I still have a really hard time with it. Um, so it's not just like one, one it, even if management is bought in, like it's, it's hard, and it's a, whole, um, it's a whole organizational change effort. Okay, so here's the reality. Um, as a manager of DevOps engineers, like, DevOps teams are chronically understaffed. By the time the company decides that like, yes, we're gonna hire folks to focus on this automation stuff over here, like you're probably already dealing with a dumpster fire, right? And so no small DevOps team is gonna be able to address the actual quantity of tech debt in that area. Um, in particular, like my personal experience um, at a place that I worked was that I had a tiny team um, I was in an organization of about 50 um, engineers, and my tools team was one, it was myself and one person that reported to me plus a part-time intern, right? Like, uh, you know, I am gonna do what I can with what I've got, but it, it was really difficult with that, um, 
that amount of capacity. Additionally, what we found was that we were running into issues understanding the boundaries of our ownership of these tools, right? Because we had so much dependence on uh, other teams. Um, like who owned what and was responsible for what became a constant negotiation, and that's it's hard. The other reality is that organizational change just is hard. Like there wouldn't be this whole um, area of, of business research around organizational change management if it wasn't really difficult. Um, so here's my challenges. Remember these four things? I feel like I had a really clear vision and that my strategy, my goals were super clear around um, where I wanted to take the organization. And I set up and um, really got some great short-term wins. Unfortunately, um, like the reality is that I did not generate a sufficiently strong sense of urgency at my company. And I did not come uh, get the buy-in from the C-level exec. And so um, um, I, I tried. And it was hard, and I was not able to do it in the time that I was there. But at the end of the day, DevOps is worth it. And we wouldn't be here today if we didn't all agree in this. So, um, so what do you do? Um, you use the team that you have, right? You can um, use temporary staff augmentation or like use consultants or something. But really, the, those folks don't care about the long-term maintainability of your tools. Uh, you need to use the team that you have because those are the folks that are going to take it um, into the future. But you can beg, borrow, and steal folks from other teams to support you in this effort, and so I highly um, encourage you to do that. And then in terms of like just cultural stuff and, and, and continuing to make um, positive impact, uh, prioritize ruthlessly and persevere. And so when I say prioritize, um, I want to, uh, I think that this, word is maybe not um, uh, used appropriately at times. Prioritizing actually means you can make a list of the stuff that you are not going to do. So if you can only do the top three things in your prioritized backlog, what that really means is that you can and should say no to everything underneath that, right? And then finally, perseverance. Changing culture takes time. Even at a small company, it can take a long time. Um, and in that case, patience is a virtue. And I fully admit that patience is not my greatest quality. Um, but it is really important because it takes time to lead a transformation. Also, DevOps may not actually be the most important thing right now for the company. And in particular, like I have worked at a company that was struggling with the company vision and was really not that great at goal setting. And so those two things need to be in place before you're going to have a successful DevOps transformation. But once that's the case, like you can and should sell DevOps as a solution to most of your other problems, right? Quality, DevOps. Customer sat, DevOps. Time to market, right? Um, so, so those are my thoughts. So basically, in summary, as a DevOps engineer, you, you end up needing to, to try and play both the, and the management role as well as the cultural uh, change agent role. And they're very different skill sets. To be a good manager to DevOps engineers, like, keep an eye out for burnout. Use your power for good when hiring. And um, make sure that you learn all the agile roles, because you're probably going to end up playing most of them. As an agent of organizational change, become familiar with, um, with organizational change management frameworks. And then finally, um, it's OK to fail, because um, you, you're trying, right? It's hard. And it's understandable that, um, that there's going to be difficulties, right? But, but Best opportunities for success come when you prioritize ruthlessly and you persevere um, and kind of stick with it for the long term. And with that, I'm going to leave you with a bunch of references, and I thank you so much for your time. <laughs>